Hi, it's Mr. Reese here from Malmesbury Science, and I'm going to show you how to do the A-level physics required practical or practicals on simple harmonic motion for a simple pendulum and a mass spring system. With the pendulum, what we want to do is change the length of the string, and then we're going to measure the time period of its oscillations. Now, I've used a couple of pieces of wood to clamp the string in between because if it was just hanging over something, then that means that the pivot wouldn't be fixed. So I can be sure that the pivot is right at the bottom of these pieces of wood. Now, when we measure this, we want to be fairly accurate. And so you'll need a centimeter resolution or one millimeter resolution ruler. I'm going to use a meter rule here. Now, I've got mine set up here for 30 centimeters. So I'm just going to check that that's correct. Notice that I'm measuring from the bottom of the wood to the middle of the bob. That's to make sure that I'm measuring to the center of mass, not to the top of the bob or the bottom of the bob. You can choose what length to do. I would go from 10 centimeters all the way to 100, and you'll need to hang your pendulum off the side of the table in order to do that, but that's okay. Now, the thread that I've used is light, and it's inextensible as well. Now, in order to make sure that we are being as accurate as possible, I'm going to use a nail as a fiducial marker. And I'm just gonna pop that on here, and that's gonna be very close to the string, although not touching it, and you don't want it too close because the string will move sideways a little bit as well, and it could catch it like that. What you wanna do is line up your nail so it's directly behind the piece of string when the pendulum is at equilibrium. Then you want to get on eye level, and so if I was doing this experiment, I would have my pendulum there, and I'd be looking at eye level so I can be sure when the string has gone past equilibrium. So I'm going to displace the pendulum. Now we're gonna do it about 10 degrees. We don't wanna do it up here. The bigger our amplitude, the less accurate the equation t equals two pi root L over G is. So I'm just gonna displace it this much. Doesn't need to be much at all. And we can just set it going. And just to be clear, one oscillation is now to now. It's not from one side to the other. It needs to go there, back, and to the center again. So I'm gonna start my stop clock when it passes equilibrium next. And obviously I would wanna be at eye level with the fiducial marker if I was doing this for real. I could measure the time taken for one oscillation, but that's not gonna be accurate. So I'm going to measure the time taken for 10 oscillations, then average it. Don't forget that when you start your stop clock, that's zero, and then you're counting one after that. So here we go, starting my stop clock now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And that gives me a time of 11.56 seconds. Dividing that by 10, that means that one oscillation, the time period T is going to be 1.156 seconds. I then want to change the length and do the same again. So here are my time periods for all my different lengths. I've just gone 20 centimeters, 40, 60, 80, 100. Now the equation, like we said, is t equals two pi root L over G, where L is the length of the piece of string. So we can't draw a graph of t against L because they're not proportional. Squaring the whole equation though, we can see that t squared is proportional to L. So that's what we're going to draw on our graph. t squared on the y-axis and L, length of the piece of string, on the x-axis. Finding the gradient, that is equal to, according to the equation, four pi squared divided by g. So what I can do is verify this relationship by finding g. Just swapping gradient and g over, we end up with g equals four pi squared over the gradient. And if I wanted to, I could find out the percentage error in that compared to the accepted 9.81 meters per second squared. The mass spring system is very similar. All we have to do is get a spring, and what we can do is trap it, on the arm of a clamp. And we're gonna have a nail as a fiducial marker, as per usual. Let's start with 100 grams of mass on the end of the spring. Now it's up to you where you put your fiducial marker, but I would have it very close to the bottom of the mass itself. Let's keep the mass still so we can see where that is. There we go. And again, I'd wanna be at eye level for this in reality. So if I displace the spring a little bit from equilibrium and set to go, and we can see that it oscillates nicely. We don't want to pull it too far because otherwise it's going to compress too much at the top and you won't get a proper oscillation. So you really don't need to displace it that much. So again, we're going to leave it go and then we're just going to start the stop clock when it passes the fiducial marker. And then we're going to call that zero and count for 10 oscillations again. So starting 
Now, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So that was 3.90 seconds divided by 10. That's 0 0.390 seconds. That's my time period for one oscillation for 100 grams. Then I'm going to add more mass on and see what the time period is again. Now that I've done 500 grams or 0 0.5 kilograms, because they do need to be working in kilograms, I'm gonna plot not T against M because similarly to the pendulum, it's not T proportional to M. The equation is T equals two pi times the square root of M over K where m is the mass and k is the spring constant. So squaring the whole thing, t squared equals four pi squared times m over k. So if I do a graph of t squared against m, I should end up with a straight line graph that goes to the origin, because t squared should be proportional to m. The gradient of this is gonna be equal to four pi squared over k, and just like last time, I can swap the gradient and k over and see what k ends up being. To verify this, I can actually carry out just the normal Hooke's law experiment to have a graph of force against extension, and that will give me an accurate value for k, and I can compare the two.